recent study at the John Hopkins Children's Center has found that a radical brain surgery can stop otherwise uncontrollable seizures. Seven-year-old Jody Miller had the procedure because she had a rare yeah. form of epilepsy. Yeah. She and other kids who have had the surgery met recently, proving they can lead fairly normal lives. Joining us this morning, Jody Miller and her parents, Lynn and Al Miller, and from Johns Hopkins Children's Center, Dr. John Freeman. Thank you all very much for being with us. Hi there, Jody. How are you? Hi. You see yourself on the TV? I'm a Jody, too. Have you ever met another Jody? No? Never? All right, it's just the two of us. How are you feeling? You feeling pretty good these days? Really? Good. Dr. Freeman, I think uh, people are going to be shocked and amazed to hear that Jody basically had half her brain removed and then a person can function without half their brain. How does this work? I think it's amazing to doctors and to all of us. Jody's a wonderful example that it's much better to have half a brain that works normally than to have a whole brain with half of it functioning very badly and giving seizures. You have a model here. Can you kind of in layman's terms tell us what you did? Essentially what we did is to take half of Jody's brain out. They do it more delicately. Uh, but Jody has the left half of her brain and the right half has been taken out. So is the brain really redundant? All the information that's in one side is also in the other side? It's dumbfounding. When you take out half the brain, children don't forget anything. They have all their long-term memories. They're able to transfer speech from the left hemisphere to the right if you're taking out the left hemisphere. It is important to do this surgery early in life, though, right? The earlier they do, the better off these children do, the better they're able to adapt, yes. In fact, you brought an x-ray with you that right. was taken not too long ago of Jody's brain. Right. What happens to the empty space? It fills up with a normal fluid that's within the brain. So there's a fluid cavity, the uh, black space on the left side of the screen, uh, is where Jody's brain used to be. Was it her left hemisphere? No. It's or is it flipped on, the image is flipped on the television? Doctors flip it over, okay. but it's the, it's the right hemisphere which is missing. The left side, there is her normal brain. So Lynn and Al, since, well, let's back up a little bit actually and talk about the decision to have this surgery in the first place. I'm sure it was agonizing when the doctors came to you and said, this is what we recommend for your daughter. What went through your mind that, that led you to say, yes, let's go ahead and have this radical surgery? There is a point at which you recognize that the seizures are, are so controlling of your life, of your child's life, of your family's life, that you say, this can't go on. No matter what else happens, this can't go on. And at that point, the decision becomes re relatively easy, believe it or not. And Al, if, if you had let it go, the situation would have deteriorated, right? Oh, yes, yes. It was, uh, it was hard enough watching her deteriorate physically, but if it's let go, there is a mental, mental deterioration that accompanies it, and that doesn't come back. She was three when she had the surgery? Uh, almost four. Tell us about that. I mean, at such a young age, did she really understand what was going on, and how did she deal with hospital rooms and doctors and nurses and losing her hair and all that kind of thing? She didn't really understand. Uh, all she knew was she was having seizures. That's Jody before the surgery. That's right. And that's mm -hmm. almost, that's very close to surgery date. That's about a week before. Uh, the day before her surgery, she had a seizure every three minutes. And all she knew was that the doctors were going to throw her seizures into the trash can. <coughs> and uh, she dealt very well with the hospitalization. And um, she still deals very well with doctors. And um, all the doctors at Hopkins are her friends. So is there a lot of follow-up? Uh, there is for her because we're right next to Hopkins, basically. We're about a half an hour away. So we take her up fairly often um, so that they can keep tabs on her and we can be sure that we're on, on track with her. So, Jody, we put the seizures in the trash can, right? Yeah? You're pretty happy? What are you doing in school these days? Are you going to be in the third grade in the fall? In the second. second grade? You're seven years old. You're going to be in the second in grade? September. And you were in an advanced reading class last year? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you like playing with Barbies? Yeah. What else? What are you looking forward to in school this next year? Writing in cursive. What was that? Writing in cursive. Writing in cursive. Oh, she's already learning. started to learn that. Excellent. Well, win. best of luck to you. I'm so proud to meet you. And you look like little Bo Peep today with your dress. <laughs> you got sheep and ducks on your leggings and everything. You just look so pretty and you look so happy. We're just... We're just so excited to meet you. Thanks for coming in. 
Thanks. Nice to Thanks. meet you, Jody. All right. Take care. Thanks. Thank you very much, Lynn and Al. And well, it's just, it's such a us. wonderful story. I mean, it's hard to believe, but it's very inspiring. Dr. Yes. Freeman, thank you very much as well. Thank you. It's 16 minutes after the hour, and coming up next, the man who created the...